Snow Treasure, Chapter 20 Peter transferred the gold from the bobsled to his own sled. He gave his mother a start, for he knew he could overtake her whenever he wished. Mrs. Lundstrom sat on the bobsled and steered it skillfully. But with the children on it, she didn't dare to take the long stretches with the speed Peter could have made. Down on the beach, he was angry to find his mother the object of much curiosity. Soldiers were filing into the open space before the barracks. Their drill master made them stand at attention while she pulled the long sled past their lines. The drill master froze sti in stiff salute. Thank the merciful heavens he had not said Hail Hitler, Peter breathed in relief, for she would have had to make some reply, and Peter knew his mother was not the one to praise a man who had brought evil to her country. And yet, she would have had to say something. If she had refused, well, anything could have happened. People were sent to concentration camps for as little a thing as that, for failing to exalt the German leader. Peter wanted to tie a sled to the long one to help his mother pull the children over the level stretch, but she told him to go ahead. "'It's the looks of the thing, Peter,' she whispered. He was glad he had gone on when, a minute later, he heard the voice of the commandant. Peter knew he was addressing his mother, but he dared not turn around to look. He had been lucky to escape as lightly as he had, the, the day the officer stopped him and asked if he would like to be his servant. "'Good morning, good lady. You've a fine day for your sled ride,' Peter knew his precise Norwegian accent. His mother made no answer. "'If you like, I'll have one of my men pull that sled,' he spoke politely. Still, his mother was silent. Then, from up the beach, Peter could see Lieutenant sit down, coming toward him and toward the commandant. He had a paper in his hand. He paid no attention to Peter, but went rapidly toward the chief officer. Peter could just make out the click of his heels as he bowed in salute. He must have handed the paper to the commandant, for there was silence as if the latter were reading a message. Then the commandant addressed the lieutenant in German. Peter on knew only a little German, but he had no difficulty making out what was said. These Norwegians, have they no manners? There's so many boors, or is it ears there lack? There was a boy here one day. I offered to let him help my orderlies. He acted as if he couldn't hear. Peter dug into the snow as hard as he could. He was that boy. He was afraid the commandant might recognize his back. He reached the cliff that hid the snake. From there he watched his mother pulling hard on the rope of the bobsled. It seemed to him that she would never arrive at the wall that would hide her from the eyes of those hundreds of Germans. Slowly she traveled over the snow. She had to turn into the valley before Peter dared give her a hand on the rope. But the snow soldiers are all knocked down, she noted. That means Victor and Rolls came out last night and loaded the gold you children brought yesterday. Could you and Helga possibly be mistaken? Helga's nearly always right, Peter spoke ruefully. It was a sore point. Helga had been right and he wrong in so many disputes. If Helga says she's seen anything, you can be pretty sure she has. Mrs. Lundstrom had to agree. Helga was known as bright throughout Ryswick. Anyway, I saw a soldier on skis just before we turned into Holmes' farm last night. He would have had to come from here. There's nowhere else he could have come from. In any event, we'll have to tell Uncle Victor so he can be on guard. Now the thing to do is find the boat. Mrs. Lundstrom drew from her pocket a drawing of the snake with the clang piercing marked with a cross. But that's right here, she said. Here are the two fallen trees. There's no boat here, Peter announced triumphantly. I looked for it every day, and I have not seen it yet. I think the children will be safe while we look, his mother said. Bunny, you and Dag and Ingrid make a snow castle, a great big one. I'll help you. Look, I'll help you start it. She dropped on the snow beside them. Peter stood the bobsled on its end. It would screen them a little from the wind. Then he untied the bricks that had transferred from his mother's sled to his own. These he buried in a drift. In no time at all, a snowman was standing guard over them. And now for the Clang Pearson. But although it was clearly marked in the drawing, there was nothing of it to be seen. Not a spar, not a boom, not a foot of the mast. Only the everlasting snow, the pines and the jutting cliffs that made pincers around the black rushing stream and its narrow borders of land. 
Peter and his mother walked to the edge of the water. In the little wooded strip, they saw a strange new kind of vegetation. The forest seemed to dance. Pines that they thought rooted in the bank now seemed to have no roots at all, but were bobbing up and down with the rush of the current. And now that they were in a part of the valley where something was amiss, they could see other strange sights. Through the thick brush on the bank, they could just about make out the Clang Pearson. But what a strange Clang Pearson! Pines were growing right out of her hull. Her mast was a towering evergreen. The branches thickened at the crow's nest and then tapered to a stately point. A pretty good job of camouflage, don't you think? A voice spoke softly at their side. Both of them jumped in fright.